what we heard from Senator J.D. Vance today, where he finally gave an answer on whether or not he thinks Donald Trump lost the election. I think unsurprisingly, he said, no, Trump did not. He said, quote, by the words that, that he himself, that Vance would use, it's a question he has dodged for, for several weeks now. Uh, what do you make uh, of what he said tonight, saying, uh, essentially denying that Donald Trump lost the election, that Donald Trump did lose? Well, first of all, it's wrong, of course. Donald Trump lost. And uh, I think he knows that. I think he's lying. Uh, I also think it's uh, a mistake politically because voters uh, have a dim view of election deniers. And up until now, he's, try he's tried to avoid officially becoming an election denier by uh, dodging the question, uh, answering the question with the question, doing anything he could but give a straight answer. Now that he's given a straight answer, he, J.D. Vance is officially uh, on the record as a, an election denier, uh, something that is uh, uh, shameful, but also uh, something that if, certainly if we look at 2022 and have pretty much anybody who is an election denier who is on the ballot in, in so many swing state statewide races lost, uh, you know, I think that's something that, that's a setback. Now, he probably has no choice because uh, Donald Trump uh, has probably demanded that he, uh, that he lie and that he say that. But uh, look, one of the most profoundly important things in a democratic process uh, is that when you lose an election, you say so. I mean, it's one of the most fundamental parts of how democracy works. It's no fun to lose an election. I know what it's like to lose an election, uh, but you do it. Uh, it. It should go without saying. The fact that it didn't go without saying is one of the most disqualifying things that helps to explain why so many conservative Republicans are not just sitting this one out, but campaigning for Kamala Harris, even though they disagree with her on a lot of policies. Well, also to say, to say in my words, I would not, it seemed a way to couch saying that he doesn't think Donald Trump lost the election, saying, you know, in the words that I would use, no, he didn't. I mean, words are words, losses are losses, wins are wins. So I just, I, I, that's, I think, the part that confused me the most in that answer. Joe Biden won. Donald Trump lost. And anybody who cannot bring themselves to say that out loud, just the way I, as much as it pains me, will say Donald Trump won and Hillary Clinton lost the election back in 2016. We begin this hour with a major media blitz. Both presidential candidates taking their messages to Fox News, though they've got two very different missions. This evening, we're going to see Kamala Harris sitting down for her first ever interview with the network as she attempts to win over more conservatives. Earlier today, Trump appeared on Fox for a town hall, telling an exclusively female audience that he is the father of IVF. Oh, I want to talk about IVF. I'm the father, you don't I'm the hear father that every day. of IVF. I'm the father of IVF. We really are the party for IVF. We want fertilization, and it's all the way. And the Democrats tried to attack us on it, and we're out there on IVF even more than them. So we're totally in favor of it. Harris is now reeling against Trump for those comments. Here's how she responded a short time ago. Donald Trump, I, I found it to be quite bizarre, actually called himself the father of IVF. And if what he meant is taking responsibility, well, then, yeah, he should take responsibility for the fact that one in three women in America lives in a Trump abortion ban state. What he should take responsibility for is that um, couples who are praying and hoping and working toward growing a family um, have have been so disappointed and, and harmed by the fact that IVF treatments have now been put at risk. Let's begin our coverage now with CNN's Elena Treen. And Elena, Trump had a lot to say during that town hall. Walk us through the highlights. Uh, right. Well, I think that IVF comment was clearly one of the highlights. It was... It a pretty odd comment. Uh, when I talked to Donald Trump senior advisors about this, look, they didn't have a direct response to the father of IVF quote, but what they said, where they said that was coming from was essentially that Donald Trump thinks that he is a leader 
on that particular issue, especially when you look back at um, some of the IVF rulings or Supreme Court rulings like in Alabama in February that did impact access to IVF. And Donald Trump had quickly come out and said, I support this. And other Republican officials followed suit. It is something I know that he brags about often in private conversations. And he thinks it's one issue where he can really help narrow that gender gap and try to make inroads with female voters. But I do want to turn your attention to another very notable moment um, from that town hall, which was when he tried to clarify his comments when he said that the greatest threat to the United States States is the enemy of the people. Take a listen. Or the enemy from within. It is the enemy from within, and they're very dangerous. We have China, we have Russia, we have all these countries. If you have a smart president, they can all be handled. The more difficult are, the, you know, the Pelosi's, uh, these people, they're so sick and they're so evil. Okay, so. And excuse me, I meant to say the enemy from within. I think the big thing here is that a lot of Republican allies, people on the Trump campaign, were trying to defend these remarks from the former president and say that he was referring to protesters, to rioters. Uh, he talked about sending the military in to deal with the enemy from within. And then he said, no, actually, he was talking about his political opponents. He was talking about Democrats. He mentioned directly the Pelosi's. And so I think it's very clear what he was trying to say. The other part of this, of course, is that Republicans continue to argue that Democrats are using very dangerous rhetoric. They continue to blame. Uh, we just saw Nancy Mace do this uh, with you moments ago, blame Democrats for the assassination attempts on the former president. But it is, you know, Donald Trump is using very dangerous language, too. Uh, Elena, he also was just uh, speaking to a group of folks at Town Hall on Univision, and he reiterated debunked claims about Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio. Tell us more about that. That's right. So, and just to be clear, this was... Uh, he just participated in this town hall in Miami. It's not going to air until later, so we don't have the clips of that. But yes, he was asked about this. A, a Republican voter um, said that, you know, I've seen these comments. The officials on the ground, Republican officials on the ground, have debunked these claims. You said that you would revoke their temporary protected status, the Haitian migrants who are living in Ohio. Um, are you worried about that? Do you take any of that back? And Donald Trump, he kind of tried to dodge it. He said that he was just looking at reports. He said, uh, quote, I was just saying what was reported. He went on, though, to add that uh, they were eating other things, too, that they were not supposed to be. I mean, he is not running away from this. I think it's very clear that, you know, these officials on the ground, again, Republican officials, the Republican mayor of the town, the Republican governor of Ohio, have been saying that these are just not true. And it goes beyond that as well. We know that these communities have been deeply impacted. We've seen the stories of these Haitian migrants saying they are scared now in that community. We've seen the bomb threats and the closures of schools because of this rhetoric. And it's something that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and a lot of Republicans are not running away from. With 20 days until Election Day, the Trump vision for his second term is being spelled out in very clear terms. You might remember that a couple of days ago we walked through comments Trump uh, made over the weekend about using the National Guard or the military to go after his political opponents. Here's what he said. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard or, if really necessary, by the military, uh, they, because they can't let that happen. Now, Trump went on to name drop Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California, who's running for the Senate labeling Schiff one of those so-called enemies from within. Now, when we presented all of this to Virginia's Republican governor, Glenn Youngkin, on Monday, he refused to accept that Trump said what he said. So, Jake, I am talking so, about Jake, Don, I would, but I'm talking about Donald Trump saying I, that he wants to use the National Guard and the military to go after the left. That's what he's saying. I, I, don't, I, I don't believe that's what he's saying. But listen, you and I are going to argue I'm, about that. But I would, I would suggest if you would I also... I played the quote and I read if, it to you. If well, you would also I mean, you balance can wish that. that he weren't saying that, but that's what he's saying. Jake, I, I, all the time, people, people are taking little snippets of context and turning it into a big, a big narrative. It was not taken out of context. As often happens when Mr. Trump makes claims that seem to push the boundaries of traditional discourse and obviously using the military to go after your political rivals qualifies. Uh, Mr. Trump continued to make it clear that the rather creative interpretations from Governor Youngkin and other Trump surrogates of his remarks were incorrect. And then, in fact, he was saying exactly what he seemed to be saying. 
Here's what Trump said today when asked about his enemy from within remarks during a town hall on Fox. They're very, very different. And it is the enemy from within. And they're very dangerous. They're dangerous for our country. We have China. We have Russia. We have all these countries. If you have a smart president, they can all be handled. The more difficult are, the, you know, the Pelosi's, uh, these people, they're so sick and they're so evil. This is obviously unprecedented in American life, mainstream American life anyway, for a nominee to be talking about using the military against their political opponents, domestic political opponents, and obviously doing so would significantly change the nature of the United States. Recall that someone who had already heard horrific and baseless conspiracy theories about Democrats and the Pelosi's actually broke into the home of the Pelosi's and attacked Paul Pelosi with a hammer, fracturing his skull leaving him with severe uh, problems. And there's more. Trump not only says that the Nancy Pelosi's and the Adam Schiff's should be, quote, handled, he also said this about what a second Trump term would mean for the free press. The news is really fake. We, that's the one we really have to straighten out. We have to straighten out our press because we have a corrupt press. Now, I don't know what it means that the press needs to be straightened out. Um, I do know that the only media organizations that Trump regularly praises and appears on for interviews are ones that seem to support him. And by the way, ones that in the past have parroted right-wing lies, especially about the 2020 election. So folks, any advantage Trump had, he squandered it. Look, Vance was a terrible pick from the beginning. What the polling showed, guys, was that out of the four, uh, Kamala, Tim, Trump and Vance, right? And I call the first two by their first name because I like them. I call the last two by their last name because there's some four letter words I'd like to use, but probably shouldn't. But out of those four, he was actually the least popular, more unpopular than Donald frickin' Trump, if you could believe it, because he was such a weirdo creep, weird in a different, weirder way, at least debatably, than Donald Trump. But he got a little bit of a reprieve, guys, during that debate. Agree with it or not, people thought he came off much more articulate and much less combative than Trump did, right? A lot of people liked him in that debate as well. They both actually rose in their approval. And so the one now saving grace for Trump was, well, he's demented and weird and cognitively declining, but the guy he picked... Seems like he's a smart man, at least, and maybe wouldn't act like a total nut job. And yet now we see him, again, not only dodge the 2020 question, but actively side with Trump. And that is absolutely disqualifying. It was disqualifying before, but it's especially disqualifying now, both because he is in disagreement with the basic facts. Vance is a highly educated Man, he knows better. He does. But also, it showcases that if he believed that, then he'll believe the next big lie. If he believed that one, he'll believe the next one. And if he's in a position to do anything about it, he will. And so keep that in mind. While Donald Trump is mentally declining, he's like, oh, I picked this young, uh, you know, polite VP that came off okay in that debate, remember the one moment of that debate that Tim exposed him, that J.D. Vance is every bit the fascist Trump is, except he might be more able to implement fascism than Donald.